security researchers discovers another interesting and clever attack. Hussein, you keep saying that every attack is interesting. Every attack is clever for you. Uh, what do I do? I mean, I am easily amused. <laughs> and I, I genuinely, this one, this one is really, really interesting. All right. This one uses two different techniques. One has to do with DLL, so it's only effect windows. And the other one, that's not partially, that's only partially true, because DLLs can run on Linux if through Wine. The other one is through ICMP, which I forgot what it stands for. <laughs> Internet Control Message Protocol, which is a low-level uh, protocol that sits on directly on top of the IP protocol, and it's used for messages between host and ping essentially uses the icmp right it just tells it's there's nothing no ports there at that level it just sends mes uh, messages back and forth echoes and replies and that's it someone decided hmm maybe it's a good idea to sneak in packets into icmp request into effectively what is ping like imagine you're pinging something and you're sending content in your ping and that content is actually essentially commands to harm the other machine very nasty sir very nasty how about we jump into it and discuss guys welcome to the back engineering show with your host hussein nasser and this one is very interesting. A new attack called ping back. New ping back malware using ICMP tunneling to evade CNC detection. I'm, I believe command and conquer. Control, command and center. I keep forgetting that. People keep inventing new things. Like CNC. When I, when I read CNC, I remember uh, Red Alert 2 and uh, Yuri's Revenge and these kind of games, Dawn 2000. That's what, what CNC to me. Like, and I believe that's what it is. Like it's command, essentially control. Command and control, maybe. That's what it stands for. But look at this. Right, guys, I don't know how... Uh, uh, I know the kids these days only use like Linux, uh, but uh, for the longest time, I, I, I developed most of my career on Windows, and I still do sometimes. So there is this thing that's called DLL file, which is basically libraries that you can uh, reference on your project and then use functions or classes inside this DLLs in your code. It's just basically for, you know, we use it for uh, essentially arranging our codes and uh, most probably for extensibility, DLL files, dynamic link libraries. And you, if you have Windows, you check, there are like thousands of DLL files. Like if you if you want to build an application that extends, you have to use DLLs, right? So I would give you the executable and I don't give you the code, but I will allow you to extend my application by giving you the API. So it's like, okay, create a new project, C Sharp or VB.NAM, and then implement this interface and then create a DLL file and just drop it in this folder automatically my application when you started automatically will recognize the dll files without me sharing my source code yeah, i know everyone now shares source code because it's an open source but without sharing the source code i can essentially extend my app java works in a very similar way but why am i telling you about dlls now because this attack this ping back actually uses dlls as the hook to carry on this uh, command and conquer. I keep saying command and conquer and people laughing at me, probably. <laughs> a command and control center to create this command and control, to create this zombie machine. So, and, and, and it's nothing but this DLL concept. They are using what is called Oracle call interface. Oracle is a database for those who don't know. Uh, very, very popular database. And uh, it supports these extensions that we talked about. You can compile your own DLL and then 
drop that DLL and name it something something dot OCI dot DLL, right? And then the Oracle call interface, to be specific, the Windows, the Windows system. Let me go the the actual name here. The Windows Microsoft Distributed Transaction Coordinator will pick up that DLL and load it. And as a result, it will load the DLL. And as, as long as the DLL adheres to the interface of the OCI, which is the Oracle Core Interface, or Microsoft will gladly load and execute and call the methods inside that DLL. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's how how that's how Windows works, baby. That's how Windows works. Once you have a DLL, you can drop a DLL, which is not an executable by itself. This is one of the things that is not executable. It needs it needs a body to function. Essentially, that's what the DLL. DLL needs an executable to run. You cannot just double click on DLL and run it, right? It needs it needs a host. Essentially, it's like a virus, right? <laughs> Pun, no pun intended here because this thing is literally a virus <laughs> that we're talking about but uh, yeah dll cannot run by itself it needs a, an, a host to run and the host is executable okay all right we know we don't understand the oracle uh, we understand the dll's we understand how this thing got in i know i have malicious code why can't we just hussein why can't you just establish an http connection to my command and control center why can't i just do a tcp connection to my command and control and do my own thing <laughs> yeah you can if you want to but you will be you will be like that just like that you will be detected just like that because there are monitorings left and right windows monitor and the, the, through defender and there is like firewalls and stuff that monitors the stuff that is outgoing. And if you're going to a nasty port, right, it will be blocked, obviously. So you can't just listen on a, a random port. Nobody does that anymore. If you're going through HTTP, right, port 80, that's unencrypted, that can be detected. If you're going through our HTTP 443, which is unencrypted, then the domain is logged. It's, you still need, we still know you, where you're going. We still understand where you're headed and that is where we can as, as as fast as possible we try to block you but how can we sneak in our nasty commands so that nobody can detect us what is a legitimate thing that everybody uses and it looks harmless answer is icmp internet control message protocol this is what ping uses by the way guys it, so let's see what uh, what wikipedia thinks of this protocol I've, I've heard about this protocol but i i didn't i'm not a network engineer pro network engineers you guys are making fun of me and i was like who say you don't know what internet control message protocol is? well i do but i'm not that expert in it so let's read through this ICMP is supporting protocol, the Internet Protocol Suite. It is used by network devices, including routers, to send error messages and operational information indicating success or failures when communicating with another IP address. So it's an IP to IP, right? You don't you don't specify a port. It's not like TCP. It's not a layer. That's why I don't call it layer four. It's more like a layer three protocol because we don't have knowledge of ports. ICMP differs from transfer protocols such as TCP and UDP in that it's not typically used to exchange data <laughs> between system. Well, this this attacker uh, beg to differ with you, Wikipedia, because he or she did use <laughs> ICMP to exchange messages and data. Nor is it regularly employed by end user network applications. All right. So it is layer three. I'm just going to call it layer 3 protocol. It, it doesn't specify, but it's a layer 3. So, those researchers says, okay, let's look through Wireshark. What's going on? <laughs> look at that. Wireshark. Guys, for, for that, guys listening in the podcast, thank you so much, by the way, for supporting the show, listening. We really appreciate every single download we can get uh, to support the show. Make sure to share it with your friends. So, we're looking at a Wireshark screen cap here 
where it says internet uh, protocol and then there is another record where it says internet control message protocol type 8 echo ping request so it thinks it's a ping essentially that's what it is it's like it simulates a ping so if your firewall supports ping enterprises by the way i think blocks ping right at least the enterprise i used to work for they just block ping so yeah yeah there's there's no reason for you to ping anything why just <laughs> they just block it <laughs> right so if if you have icmp enabled then this guy is having a checksum some sequence numbers and here's here's a beautiful packet data seven eight eight bytes look at that shell it doesn't say what's next but you know what's after shell guys probably a bad something bad <laughs> so it's like it's, it's like it's using icmp to carry on these commands left and right so the the first thing when i read about this it's like what is going on here are, are we this dll that is snuck in to the server uh, to the to the victim machine is essentially listening on icmp packets right so so this made me the programmer in me started thinking so can i build an icmp server because technically you need to listen to these messages right and apparently yeah you can you can definitely you can build one with node.js with python and yeah just build a node uh, uh, an icmp message and if you're filtering you can you're gonna receive tons of icmp message because even if, if like if you want to even tcp uses icmp if you think about it like if you want to connect to yahoo.com on port i don't know 999 which obviously is not there what tells you that this is not there something something bad something tells your application that the port is not open right the, or the host is not available if the ip is even not there that's the icmp that's what that's part of the icmp job Okay, it goes into the th the lower level, but it tells you all this information, so you can do so much, so much nasty stuff with that. So yeah, you can definitely build your own ICMP server, and you can use ICMP tunneling. Let's read through this uh, our, uh, paragraph. I really like this a lot. Let's read through this and then discuss a little bit. I have one bit. Hopefully, I don't forget about DNS, because that I've seen something similar happen to DNS. Or, uh, I think I discussed it in another episode icmp tunneling is not new but this particular sample p p what picued picued what what is this word picued peck piked piked p-i-q-e-d why do people invent new words a feeling of irritation or resentment resulting from a slight uh, especially to one's pride he lift in a fit of a peak peak is it peak isn't peak spelled p-e-a-k all right i'm gonna say peak our interest but this particular sample peaked our interest as a real world example of malware using this technique to evade detection detection it definitely peaked my interest too how about what do you think guys did it peak your interest too I heard this word before, peaked. Uh, yeah, this peaked my interest. I heard it, but I didn't know that it's spelled this way. Ugh, English. So difficult, my friend. I can't uh, keep, up, keep up with all these new words. ICMP is useful for diagnostics and performance of IP connections, but it can also be misused by malicious actors to scan and map a target's network environment while uh well tell this to the wikipedia because they are they, apparently they don't know that <laughs> yeah we need to we need to add in a new section of wikipedia it's like okay uh, known attacks while we are not suggesting that icmp should be disabled we do suggest putting in place monitoring to help detect such covert communication over icmp because yeah who monitors icmp i mean the enterprise i worked for blocked it all together and i don't know if they blocked just ping or they blocked the whole icmp because yeah if you blocked it then you're safe for this attack but i mean you need really to monitor you need a smart firewall you need to invest on a smart firewall 
essentially, right? Firewalls to block ICMP messages. So it needs it needs to read all this content, essentially, right? It needs to read uh, at least layer four content, which is the uh, ports, uh, the protocol, the IP, ICMP, all that stuff needs to understand deep level inspection, deep packet inspection, DPI. It does a deep packet inspection. It just reads all the understands and then kind of build models right what this is where ai becomes really pro uh, powerful right to understand it's like okay mm, has something fishy going on with your icmp those don't look like the normal icmp messages i see you're, you're actually sending something in the data what are you doing hmm maybe we should uh, we should do something about it. Hey guys, Hussein from editing. Uh, I just realized that I didn't discuss the DNS bet. <laughs> just uh, going through the editing process. So yeah, uh, we've seen something similar here where people uh, used DNS queries to uh, inject and, and sneak in content, right? Into, uh, uh, as part of the DNS uh, name service right so they would uh, do a random string dot the attacker dot com and that random string is the content itself right so you have only specific length but they would uh, send multiple dns requests and dns is almost allowed for every single file or nobody blocks dns so it will just go through and eventually attacker.com will funnel and go to the root DNS server owned by the attacker. And they the, uh, the attacker knows that these are not real host names, obviously. They are just content. So they look through this and then parse it and effectively uh, get, get uh, uh, establish a tunnel. Even some of you guys uh, in the comment section said, like, someone built an internet tunneling through DNS? Like, even if you don't have internet, some providers will allow you to send DNS queries, but not IP, uh, uh, not specifically other, uh, you cannot go through any other port, just 53. So essentially they, they, they managed to tunnel in the IP content in the DNS query. Don't ask me how, this is just over my head, but essentially I'm probably serializing everything into this parts of the host and sending everything through. So very interesting and uh, i'm just baffled by how these uh were these clever hacks and and how come people use and abuse the system to essentially alas unfortunately for bad uh, results right unfortunately but it's a clever nevertheless that's why we discuss in this channel all right back to the editing all right guys so i thought this is something uh uh, interesting uh, i'd like to share it with with you guys uh kudos to ravi lakshmanan good great article uh there's more more details here but it's a, it's a very succinct article and then to the point i love these kind of articles short to the point kudos ravi all right guys uh i think that's it for me today i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome make sure to subscribe and like this uh video if you like it and uh, we're going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.